Hi Year 3, this is your computing lesson for Thursday the 1st of July. Now I apologise because I know that last week there was an issue with the sound, um, so hopefully this one will be better. Um, so we're going to look at interpreting survey data. Now last week what I asked you to do, even though it was silent, um, is I'd like you to have written your survey. So in school we were choosing a topic and we were writing a survey about something that was interesting to us and we could ask about at schools whether that was favourite school dinners or favourite TV programme or anything at all and I asked you to write a survey and I wanted it to be between five and ten questions. So the first thing I need you to do is I need you to finish that first because what you're going to do is when you come back into school we're going to be typing it all up and putting in asking people the answers putting it in to make graphs and analysing and interpreting our data that we've got. So we're going to be looking at interpreting data today. What I'd like you to do is just make sure that your survey is completely written, whether that's on the computer, because I know that some of you have done that on the computer and I've seen it on tapestry, or you've handwritten it for now. That's absolutely fine. So you can just make sure you've done that first of all. OK, so we are going to look at surveys. So a survey is when it's a bit like a questionnaire and it asks someone some questions for them to write their answers or tell you their answers. So we went through some ideas last week and we've done some when we were in school. Like I just said, it could be something like playtime could be your survey topic and you might ask them if they enjoy playtime, if there's anything that they want to have to improve playtime. Is there any, uh, what's their favourite toy to play with? What's their favourite game to play? That sort of thing can come up in a survey and what will happen is we're going to ask people in our year group the questions we're then going to collect our information and put it into a tally chart on the computer so can you just make sure that you've written your questions for your survey and today we're going to interpret it so we're going to look at some data that someone uh, that we've created and then we're going to go over our answers so first things first i've got some survey questions to ask you you're going to write down your answer so my first question, and this is just to give you some different examples of what you could do, because your questions don't always have to be tick a box. It could be circle a box. It could be to draw something. It could be to draw a smiley face to show how you feel, whether you feel happy about it. You could draw a smiley face. You can choose how your answers are shown. So question here, how many books will you try and read in the summer holidays? Please tick one box. Zero, one to two, three to four, five to six or more. And if there's more, then ask them to specify. For example, if you're trying to read 11 books, you might tick that one and then you might write 11. Now, be careful in this one because some people, and I've looked um, at examples on Tapestry, some of you have done examples like, are you a vegetarian? Yes, no, other. Now, you're either a vegetarian or you're not a vegetarian. There is no other. So just be really careful you're using other as an option when it makes sense to just be really careful with that and just double check your survey works for that okay so you've got your answer make sure you've written down your answer next question what is your favorite cereal please circle your answer so this time i chose a circle one now you're obviously going to write it down but in the actual thing you could circle it so i've said cornflakes cocoa pops frosties weetabix crunchy nut or other and then you would write down the name of another cereal other can also then be, if you don't like cereal, you could say no cereal. OK, make sure you put down your answer. And your next one is what is your favourite season? And here I've done a picture of a tree and I've said draw green leaves on the tree if it is summer, blossom if it is spring, leaves falling off the tree if it is autumn and no leaves if it is winter. So now you can draw on your piece of paper the tree to show which season you like. So again, that's just another example doesn't always have to be ticking boxes or writing your answer it can be different things in your survey so when you've done your survey can you just make sure you've got a few different ideas for your questions and how the person is going to show your answer show you their answer okay we're now going to do some interpretation of data so i'm going to show you some data so it could be in a graph i'm going to ask you some questions about the graph and you're going to write down your answers so our first graph, I'm just going to hide the questions for now, I want you to focus on the graph. Is this the graph to show the books that we read in the summer? We've got Mandela, Pankhurst and Gandhi. That's a number of books. And you can see the number of books goes up in twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. And the dotted line is in between. So the dotted line here would be one, two, and that would be three, four, that would be five, six, etc. 
and we've got our classes down the bottom so we can see how many books we would read in the summer. So let's have a look at the questions and you're going to write your answers down in, on your piece of paper. Which class reads the most books? Have a look at those bars. Which class reads the fewest books? That's the ones with the least number of books. And the last question, how many more books are read over summer in Mandela, that's this bar here, than Gandhi, that's this bar here. So you can see, just to help you with that one, if I draw a line, Gandhi, you can see, is up to four. Mandela is here where there isn't a number, but we know that's eight, that's 10, that must be nine. So how many more books are read over summer in Mandela than Gandhi? So write down your three answers for those questions. Pause it if you haven't done that yet, and then we're gonna move on to the next graph. Okay, favorite cereal. So this time we've got another graph and they've got chosen different cereals. So we've got chocolate grain, is this bar? Honey bites, is this bar? Cornflakes is this bar and golden corn is this bar and number of children. And again, it's going up in twos. So two, four, six, eight, ten. And that line in between is one, will be three, et cetera, et cetera. So my first question is how many children voted for honey bites cereal? That's this one here, honey bites. Question two, how many children voted for cornflakes? Cornflakes goes all the way up there, so I'll draw a line just to show you. And the last question for this graph, how many more children voted for honey bites than golden corn? I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger for you. Honey bites is here and golden corn is here. So how many more children voted for honey bites than golden corn? Okay, and pause the video if you haven't managed to do those three questions yet. And then we're gonna to go to the next graph. Okay, so this time we've got, three, we've got four bars and they're going in a different direction. So they're going across this way. So we've got spring, summer, autumn, and winter, and exactly the same. Instead of it being this way, it's now horizontal. So my first question is, how many children chose autumn? You look for where autumn is, you go across. Which was the least popular season? And the last one's a bit trickier. If four more children voted for winter, this bottom bar here, how many would have voted for that season? I'll read that one again for you. If four more children voted for winter, how many would have voted for that season? So you can write down your three answers there. If you put your answers onto tapestry, then your teacher or LSA in your class will have a look at it as soon as they can. And hopefully you have finished your own survey because next week we're gonna make sure they're all typed up and we can start handing out our surveys to ask people the questions that we've done. So make sure your survey makes sense. Make sure you haven't used other in your survey because that word doesn't always make sense, but it does sometimes. And make sure it's nice and clear for people to see. Good luck with your questions. I look forward to seeing them on Tapestry and I will see some of you tomorrow. Bye, year three.